Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm good, Danielle. I love Chicago, by the way. Okay, so you're you're a fan. What's your favorite places when you come here? Um, you know, I was there. I went on the riverboat tour. I loved that. Um, I went and had the uh, the famous. I can't remember the name of the restaurant, but where they have the deep dish pizza. Do you know Giordano's? Yeah, Giordano. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so I had, I had that. That <laughs> was phenomenal. Pizza. Yeah, and I got to listen to some amazing uh, blues music as well, live music, which was fantastic. So I, I had a. I've worked there a couple of times, and I've had a great time. Oh, cool. It's a, it's a great city. Hopefully when we're open again, we'll be able to enjoy it again. <laughs> so, um, congratulations on an incredible uh, performance uh, in this film. Like I, I was saying, I was so moved by this film for so many different reasons. And I was just really struck. I really think your character and Malcolm X's character were some of the most complex to even try to portray because they've been done before. And what I noticed with you is you play such a different Muhammad Ali, like this Muhammad Ali that in front of the camera is very bold and brash and the way we all knew him to be, but behind the scenes with his friends, he's just trying to figure out the world and figure out his spirituality and, and where he wants to go. And having Malcolm kind of as his mentor was almost uh, it was very innocent and um, almost childlike in certain in certain um, scenes. How did you approach playing that part of Muhammad Ali, which is not something that's discussed or even shown quite a bit? Yeah, I think it um, it was just a lot of research and really looking into um, the, mul the the multiple dimensions uh, of his character. You know, I read a book called um, Blood Brothers that talked about his relationship with Malcolm X. And it goes into that a lot about, you know, um, that he was just, he was still, even though he's wise beyond his years, he was still just a very young man when he met yeah. Malcolm, he was still a teenager. Um, and then he was only 22 when, uh, you know, he became the world's, you know, world champion. Um, right. And uh, the most famous athlete at that time, you know, and so even though on the outside as a fighter, he definitely had that confidence and that self-assuredness um, that you need to have as a fighter because you're getting in the ring, in that ring, you know, alone by yourself. Um, but at the same time, you know, there were a lot of things that he was concerned about, you know, the nation of Islam um, was both uh, a, a, a support, but also, you know, a very powerful entity that had a lot of influence and, and um, mm -hmm. you know, so, so he had to he had to balance that. And then his friendship with Malcolm was something that, you know, this is why it's so important. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I don't read anything or watch anything past the time when when when, when the film was happening that I'm that I was watching. Well, if I had done that, then I would have never seen that years later in interviews, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali said that one of the one of the biggest regrets of his life yeah. was that he he left that relationship and that he didn't defend him and that at the time he didn't know how to say it he felt so much pressure yeah you know so that's something that I could incorporate into my performance even mm. though if I had just watched that period of time I would have never known that that's where he ended that's actually how he was feeling but he couldn't say it until decades later you know so um so I think, yeah, just a lot of research and, and a lot of um, diligence to, to try and honor, you know, his legacy. I thought you, you play, I love the transition of the different um, individual, you guys, individual transitions. You have Malcolm X who's transitioning to leaving the nation of Islam after discovering the man that he idolized was flawed and, and imperfect. And then you have this, between you and Malcolm, where you guys are trying to make a decision of where your friendship goes to the next, you know, what level does it go to? And you brought up a good point because I did, it immediately came to my recollection that that was one of his biggest regrets. And as I was watching the film, the way you guys interacted and portrayed that scene just kind of hit me in the gut because at the end of the day, they're two icons, but they're just two friends. They were two yeah. friends, you know, exactly. and I think that theme of the film is what I enjoyed the most because you do not get to see these intimate relationships between black men uh, portrayed this way. They were iconic, but they at the end of the day were four friends mm -hmm. 
hanging out after the fight. You know, <laughs> that's kind of how I took it. So with, with that, um, that kind of overall theme of brotherhood and friendship, what was it like collaborating between the four of you guys to, to capture that brotherhood all while being directed by a black woman? What was that like? Um, I mean, I think for us to connect, it was really about connecting to these men and their stories and then connecting to the material and fully committing ourselves because once you, we did that, the connection of those men naturally occurred. Like once we were fully invested in portraying them, their natural friendship through the words that Kemp wrote um, immersed. Um, and, and as far as, you know, being directed by Regina, I mean, it, you know, there was no one that, no one else that could have done what she did. I, I really believe that she's just um, immensely and, and uh, uh, indescribably talented such a great leader, so graceful, such a great communicator, um, and someone who just really had a vision, you know, for what she wanted this film to be. You know, it's it's essentially four different stories, and each one of us came in with an idea of the story we were telling from our character's perspective. And for her as the conductor to have a vision of what the overall story really was about, and to um, to bring that to fruition like she did um, at, at such an excellent level. It's, it's amazing. One of the things that I really thought was very relevant was the discussion that each of you guys are having about your role as celebrities or people of influence and how that's supposed to translate into how you guys speak about the ways of things happening in the world. I think that's very indicative of some of the things that we deal with now. Do you feel like it's still the same that people of influence, particularly people of color, should use their platforms to, to speak on the issues that are happening in the world? I think you should be authentic to who you are and what you represent. I don't think you should get on something because it's uh, um, in the media or because someone's talking about it on, on the news or because someone expects something of you. Uh, I'm a Christian and I believe in Jesus Christ. So when I'm out there, I tell people about my faith. I think that's what Muhammad Ali was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he believed in Islam with his whole heart and he wanted to, he thought it would be a blessing to people to share that. Um, you know, I'm a black man. And so when there's issues in the black community that affect me, I have something to say about it. So I'm going to speak my mind or I'm going to make films whenever, whatever film I'm in, whatever project I do, I'm a black man doing that, you know, whether I'm a cop or a, a astronaut or whatever I'm playing, I'm a black astronaut, I'm a black cop. So that's going to um, naturally affect the work. Like I was saying to another person I was just interviewed by a little while ago, you know, when Denzel did Training Day, there's nothing in that role that makes it a black role. He's, he's but because he's playing it, it obviously affects the connotation and the way the role is carried and how, how everything about it changes once you put a black man in that role. So, you know, that is a powerful message. Him winning the Oscar in that role was a powerful message and did make a difference and did affect um you know our, our expectations and our opportunities and and so because he did it with excellence you know and so i think as an artist your responsibility is to just be honest to be truthful and to do things as with the highest level of excellence that you can possibly do them and then that's going to reverberate and that's going to resonate uh in the world and, and with somebody out there it's going to connect i couldn't agree with you more um when you, I, I read in, um, I was doing some research, but I read that you have wanted to play Muhammad Ali for most of your career. How did it feel when you found out, <laughs> I finally have the moment? <laughs> it, was, it was a dream come true. I mean, it was unreal. It was unreal. I just, I, it's still, it's still wild to me. It's like, you know, I remember my, my uncles would tell me, you know, about Cassius Clay and about Muhammad Ali and and when I got a little older, people started saying, you know, I kind of favored him a little bit. And my grandmother had his picture up on, on her wall in her living room and, you know, all the all of her 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 black stars that she loved yeah. <laughs> them up on the wall, you know, and um, but he was her favorite. And I remember my mom, you know, saying like the first time she'd ever heard someone of a black person say that they were beautiful on television was when he had said that and that it, it changed her and affected her so deeply. Um, just, just to see a black person say that they were beautiful on on television, you know, right. just 
unheard of in her in her time, you know. So, yeah. um, so yeah, it was just like, I mean, there's you know, it was just a dream come true. Well, I always say there's, my dad is a retired actor, so I always tell people there's people who imitate, you know, icons, and then those who actually become, and you really became, and what I loved about it is you showed Muhammad Ali in a very three-dimensional way, um, instead of, you know, the one side that we always get to see, and I really, really appreciated that about your performance. So, congratulations and thank you very much for speaking to me. All the success to you in the film. Thank you. God bless you. Stay safe. God bless you.